Hi, I am Perlupi and welcome back to the Northland Workshop. Today we're going to build a drawer with lock rabbit jointery and we're going to use the most used tool in my workshop, the radial arm saw. Yes, we're going to build this drawer right here making every single cut for it on the radial arm saw. And guess what? I still have all ten fingers after building this drawer. So let's take a look at what exactly a lock rabbit drawer is and then we will get into building it on the radial arm saw. In order to build a lock rabbit drawer we need to know exactly what a lock rabbit is. If we pretend this scrap piece of wood is the side of the drawer you'll see it has this dado in it. It's a quarter inch wide dado, quarter inch deep and set in from the front a quarter of an inch. Then you have the front of the drawer that has this rabbit in it and it's set down a quarter of an inch, it's a quarter of an inch wide and a quarter of an inch long. And what happens is these two fit together just like that and what you get is an incredibly strong joint that even without glue, if I'm pulling this in the direction the drawer is going to be pulled in, it doesn't come apart because it fits into the side. So all the glue has to do is keep the sides on and the mechanical connection of that rabbit in that dado does the rest. So now that we understand how the lock rabbit drawer goes together, we can build one. Now you might be saying to yourself, self, I don't want to see this on the front of my drawer. Well, that is a valid concern. This is for drawer construction that has a false front. So this is the drawer box. It's going to have an applied face that goes over the front of it so you never see this edge. So what you see is the lock rabbit from the top. On the side of the drawer you just see plain side and you don't see this edge because it's covered up by hardwood or whatever you use for an actual false drawer front. The very first thing I have to do to this drawer is to rip the front, back, and two sides to their final width. You want to do that all in one setup so that way they're all identically sized. Any discrepancy in the height of these things will show up in the corners where they join together and you want it to be nice and smooth. So you want to set up the saw to make the rip cuts and then make all the rip cuts before moving on to the next step. So right now my radial arm saw is set up in cross cutting mode as it usually is because most of what I do is cross cutting. I need to set it to ripping mode. So the first thing I need to do is to crank it up to get the blade up above this kerf that is cut in the table. And that should be good. Now I want to pull this thing out and there's two things I have to do in order to move this into ripping position. There's a locking clamp for the yoke assembly. I have to unlock that. And then there's this pin that works a detent to lock it in 90 degrees. I have to pull up on that and rotate the yoke. Now I can turn it, pull it away from the fence a little bit, turn it some more, there. And the pin just dropped down into the new location and that sets it parallel to the fence. Now I always like to do a sanity check of pushing it back up against the fence and making sure the blade truly is parallel to it because if it's not it'll either burn the wood or it'll kick it right back to you and neither one of those things is ideal. At this point I can go ahead and lower the saw back down. Now if you have anti-kickback pawls on your radial arm saw, I highly suggest you use them. They are missing on mine and so they are missing. Now what I want to do is before I set the distance to this thing, I want to do something with the guard. When ripping on the radial arm saw, it's important to feed the wood opposite the rotation of the blade. So in this case, the blade is trying to rotate this way, so I need to feed it in opposing that. Otherwise, it could actually act like a wheel 
grab the wood and try to self-feed itself, sucking it in and potentially sucking my hand into the blade with it. And that's just less than ideal. So I want to make sure I know which side of the blade I'm feeding it from, always opposing the blade. Now there's a downside to that, and that is that at this point this blade is rotating up and away from the table, which means the wood is going to have a tendency to try and lift off the table, and that's a little unsettling. So, to help prevent that, this top guard actually has a slot. You loosen up the wing nut, and you can rotate it down. You want to rotate it down so that way this edge is just as close to the top of the surface of the board as possible. Now this is a very big saw and it's designed for cutting very thick wood. So this blade guard doesn't get quite as close to the surface of the wood as I would like, but ideally you want it to be about an eighth of an inch away from the top of the wood. The closer you get it, the less it's going to be able to lift up. This is here to keep it from lifting up. It's also there to keep your hand from sliding into the thing as you push the wood along. With that guard set, we can now go ahead and set the distance from the fence to the inside part of the blade, and that will give us the correct width for ripping the pieces. Once the correct width is set, we need to keep this thing from adjusting itself throughout the cut because best case scenario, it makes a horrible cut. Worst case scenario, it binds and it kicks back at us. The way to keep it stationary is with the carriage lock. This keeps it so it can't slide in and out. Whenever I'm making more than one cut for the same part of a project, in this case two drawer sides and an identical front and back, I like to take the time to set up a stop block on the fence of the radial arm saw so that way I know both side pieces will be identical. I've gone ahead and laid out a line at the back edge of where the drawer front's going to meet the drawer side. This is a scrap piece of wood for setting up it up, but other than that, it's exactly the same. What I did is I took this layout line and I lined it up with the outermost tooth on this dado head. I took the regular saw blade off the real arm saw and I've replaced it with two blades in a dado set and that will give me a quarter inch wide groove which will be perfect for the lock rabbit that we're going to form on the front and back of the drawer. So let's go ahead and test this out and see how close I got it. If I have to adjust the stop block a little bit, I can. It's a lot easier to try it on a scrap piece than it is to mess up the actual drawer side. So now if I line it up flush, you can see it lines right up with the edge of the dado. So that's perfect. That's exactly how I want. Now there's only one last thing to check, and that is to make sure that the depth of the dado truly is a quarter inch. And the easiest way to do that is just with my little combination square. It's set to a quarter inch, and as you can see, it just barely bottoms out on the dado. So we are good to go. Now we can run the side pieces. Now after a change in the location of the stop block, I was able to cut this rabbit. And this is going to be the lock rabbit on the front and back of the drawer. And as you can see, if I put the pretend drawer side in, it's a nice tight joint. It doesn't come apart by shaking, yet I don't have to pound it in. If it's too tight and I have to hammer it in, I risk breaking out this little part right here. So you want to be careful that it's a snug fit, but if you have to use more than just slight hand pressure to put it together, it's a little too tight. Now that I know this rabbit is correct, I can go ahead and cut this on the real arm saw.
And just like that, our little drawer is really coming together. And you can really see how the lock rabbits work. Even without glue, I can't pull the front off this thing because it's locked in these two little dados like that. So once we add some glue to this thing, it's never coming apart again. So, the only thing we have left to do is to give this drawer a bottom because right now it's not going to accomplish a whole lot the way it is. And I like to wait and not cut the piece of plywood for the bottom until I have the drawer all together so that way if there's some slight variations in this I can take care of that with cutting the bottom now. You got some options when choosing a bottom for this thing. If this is going to be subjected to a lot of heavy tools a lot of times a half inch bottom is the way to go. However, as you can see, this is a very small drawer. The thing's only just over 10 inches wide, so it doesn't have a real big span. It's just going to have some drill bits and hole saws in it. So I think for this one, a quarter inch bottom will be plenty. So I still have the quarter inch dado head set up in the real arm saw. Now we can go ahead and cut a quarter inch groove all the way around for the bottom. Now one final thing I want to do before I cut the grooves in these pieces is to actually draw on them where the groove needs to be because I want to make sure that I have it set correctly so I don't end up with the groove on the outside of the front or the back. I want to make sure it's actually in where it's going to be in the drawer. Now the easiest way to set it a quarter of an inch away from the fence is to take the shank of a quarter inch drill bit and just gently set it in between the blade and the fence. Now I can go ahead and lock down the carriage lock. There. Now I know it's a quarter of an inch away from the fence. However, I still want to do a test cut first just to make sure everything's fine before I try it with the real work pieces. Because it would be a shame to wreck the drawer pieces now that they're fitting together so nicely. I've installed a feather board on the fence of the rail arm saw to keep the stock pressed firmly to the table because I want it to be a uniform depth all the way along the groove and if it starts to pick up that's going to ruin the groove. So now we're all set to start cutting the groove for the plywood. It's time to rip down the quarter inch plywood bottom for the drawer and because it's 10 and 7 eighths inches wide, I've switched the saw over to its outrip position, which means the blade is now facing away from the fence and the motor is facing in. Now because I always have to feed the wood for ripping in the opposite direction the blade turns, because I rotated the saw 180 degrees, I have to feed it from the other side. Because again, the blade rotates this way, I have to feed it opposing the blade, otherwise it could just grab it and throw it out the other end. And that would wreck the workpiece and the wall of my workshop. Now I just have to cross cut the bottom and we can assemble the drawer. Now it's time for the most exciting part, assembly. All I want to do is put a thin bead of glue in each of the dados and the grooves because this is a plywood drawer with a plywood bottom so I'm not concerned about any kind of expansion or contraction. Then I'm going to go ahead and put some glue in the grooves for the front 
in the back where the bottom goes. And I'll go ahead and put those into place. Now I look at the bottom and it's warped like this, so I want to put the warp up, kind of like a pre-stressed beam. That way, as you put stuff in the drawer, it tries to push it down. Now I do need to work a little bit to get it to pop into this groove, just because of the warp. But, if you start at one end and work your way to the other, there. That's in. Now I can go ahead and put glue in the dados and grooves here. And I can put this side of the box, or drawer box, together. And again, the warp and make it a little tricky to get that put together, but it was not that bad. Now what I want to do is get a couple clamps on this thing. And if there are slight imperfections with the lineup of that, a couple taps will flush up those joints. Then I will clamp this side. And at this point, what I want to do is check for square. And the easiest way to check for square is to measure the two diagonals. And as long as they're the same, I'm all set. So let's see what we have here. I have a 16th under 23 in that direction. And I have 23 exactly in that direction. So, this is a little bit longer. In order to get this thing square, I can put a clamp from here to here and squeeze it in just a little bit and make these two exactly the same. However, this is a little utility drawer in my workshop. A sixteenth of an inch out of square is something I can live with with this thing. So, I'm all set with that one. And that is how you make a drawer completely on the radial arm saw.